express an understanding of transcendent God who is radically immanent in Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Participation in the triune personal existence of God through the experience of uncreated divine life, both an experience of the apophatic and immanent life of God. <coughs> the Holy Spirit makes present uh, God's immanent life. The imma this immanent life of the Trinity is revealed in the Eucharistic and the uh, uncreated light of all of, uh, of glory. Also, the tension between apophaticism and ontology uh, emphasized by um, um, Aristotle Papa Nicolau in Being with God was reduced by the father um, Alexander Golitsyn into this shining face Christology, a sort of conceptual apparatus to link theological notion uh, of person as face. Actually, the ontological realities of otherness, openness of being, movement toward communion or relation with the apophatesis of life. Actually, the shining face experience requires, above all, uh, the conceptualization of concepts for the purpose of expressing the antinomy, antinomy of the transcendent and immanent God that uh, makes possible the event of divine human communion. God, who is, who is uh, simultaneously immanent and transcendent, reveals himself into the human face. During <coughs> dwelling in this apophatic life, a real experience and union with the transcendent God. Hypostatic on Phos. This is the key uh, linking um, the theology of the Hesychast father, uh, St. Gregory Palamas, to the experience of Makarian homilist, uh, also the Syrian the theologian from the late antiquity. This light, for this most actually is Christ shining substantially, hypostatic on. Christ becomes present in the soul as he was in the incarnation. And to this, his presence, we are being mixed from within with the light of the Trinity. Like for Macarius of Palamas, Father Alexander Golitsyn also accepts that lights and glory are essentially <coughs> equ equivalent. And he's trying to prove this uh, through appeal, as we shall see to the Macarian phrase, and usia, and usia ke a divine light shining essentially and substantially, <coughs> emphasizing that this hypostatic force is Christ himself. The Macarian phrase describes the Lord's indwelling in human soul, mind, heart, and body. This is for the experience of God's uncreated light, a mystical realist of the divine human communion. <coughs> but, but when you hear of the vision of God face to face, says Palamas, this recalls the testimony of Maximus. Deification is an hypostatic, an hypostatic and direct illumination which has no beginning. This light is not the essence of God, essence of God, says Gregory, but it transforms the body and communicates its one splendor to it when miraculously the light which defies the body becomes accessible to the bodily eyes. Thus, indeed, the, uh, indeed, the great Arsenius appear when engaged in uh, his just combat. Similarly, Stephen was being stoned, and Moses, when he descended from the mountain, sometimes the light speaks clearly, as it were it uh, ineffable words to him who contemplates it. Such was the case with Paul. It is an hypostatic, not because it possesses a hypostasis of its own, but because the spirit sends it out into the hypostasis of another, in which it is indeed contemplated. It is then properly called an hypostatic, in that it is not contemplated by itself, nor in essence, but in hypostasis. The Evangelist, to Evangelist, there is a coincidence of the light and face in the kindred light, 
those in games pos schemata tu as the splendor of the lord face lord's face and because, and because there is no part of the soul that is not full of the spiritual eyes of light says macarian omnis he becomes all light or face all eye when we see the divine light says Simon the new theologian your body shines and become as resplendent as God himself Simon describes <coughs> how divine fire purifies pu purifies the ascetic and makes him full of light and radiance illumining me from every side by his immortal radiance lining all my members by his rays i partake i partake of his light I participate in his in his glory and my face sh shines as the face of my beloved and all my members become light bearing the shining face theology as the luminous metamorphosis of the visionary recalls the desert father's experience shining face theology of the uncreated light um, hidden prenition apophatic theology no one has Uh, so far called the shining light of the faces of the desert fathers to be uncreated this being actually a polemic hesychast concept appeared in use only in the 14th century <coughs> and also badly experience experience since the this earthly life the secondary passes into the hesychast hesychast theology this light this light of the face of christ despite its in uncreated and uncomprehensible nature it perceptible by human senses purity illumination vision vision or catharsis photismos theosis paul says god who has ordered ordered light to shine from darkness has made his light to shine in our hearts in order that we may be aligned by the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ but he adds We carry this treasure in earthen vessels. So we, we, we carry the Father's light in the face, prosopon, of Jesus Christ in earthen vessels that is in our bodies, in order to, to know the glory of the Holy Spirit. In spiritual tradition of Ezechias and the vision of, of light at the culmination of intense periods of prayer is the edification of our nature. This light is an hypostatic symbol, the uncreated radiance of God, an energy, a divine energy. This manifestation of Christ in the divine nature is not something external to ourselves, but it is in the rise through the life of ascetics, asceticism and prayer. But if the gates of the heart are opened by repent repentance, Christ arises as from a tomb, and the light of the resurrection wraps the body of the ascetic, focusing on his face, a sign of intersubjectivity, claiming the existence of the real deified person. The body partake of uncreated light, what I call the aesthetic of apophatesis. Another name for the edification as Christification, but by, by uni uniting with the uncreated light. Theosis also is, is, is described as transformation into unveiled glory, a somatic experience of glory in which we cannot speak Christosis from uh, separate Christosis from Theosis. Likeness also means a radiation of the presence of God within man, a recipro reciprocal interiority in the sense this communion is expressed in the way uh, God's glory is reflected on their faces in anticipation of the age to come. Therefore, being able to find God through set to the senses suggests a rehabilitation of the all of the human person operating not just an, at an intellectual level, but in an unfleshed body which perceives greater than intuits God. Participation is in a, the mainstream Greek Byzantine <coughs> tradition of theological thought. It means that God is actually working in what he has made. This is the way through which we have to find out how a transcendent activity is accommodated to created otherness. In mirroring 
Christ within ourselves, we are somehow being conformed to the very splendor of His glory, be becoming radiant vessel of the glory. Thus, here is the Golitsan contribution, Father Golitsan contribution. Christ, Christ becomes present in the soul as He has in the incarnation, and through His presence, we are being mixed from within with the light of the Trinity. <coughs> His Grace Father Alexander Golitsan has some very important contribution to the 20th century Orthodox theology, along with Vladimir Lossky, Dmitry Stanilaj, John Romanides, and many others of the new, new patristic synthesis. For example, <laughs> what was largely lacking in these earlier scholars, according to Golitsan, was any significant engagement with the patrimony of Israel, the immediately pre- and post-Christian Israel. Biblical and extra-biblical sources continue to be generally neglected in Orthodox Academy. Along with, the, with this personal statement, I find in Father Golitsyn thought another important theological dimension, which is that of hagiography, another missing piece of the new patristic theology. Christian sense sent as place of, and of the throne of the Father and Son sent us to the issue of this present study, the indwelling of the divine glory of Christ in the Spirit, the uncreated light reflected in the faces and bodies of the saints, from the martyrdom of uh, Stephen to the saint Seraphim of Sarov. The depiction, depiction of holy men as Theophany, whose face and members are bearers of divine light, <coughs> photophora, leads to the question about the nature of this light. Here, Father Golitsyn agrees with Makarius that this light is personal, hypostatic, and substantial, usiodes. Indeed, for Makarian homilies, the divine and objective nature of the light which appears is not a noema, a product, a product of the intellect, but an hypostatic composed substantial light. Also, the nous becomes a vessel ready to receive the light of the Trinity. <coughs> During holy man's transfiguration, his face shone like lightning, and they, they become Christ in Christ, the place of his presence according to Father Golitsyn. Therefore, within this theological context, we aim to deal with Father Alexander's view on Trinity starting from this theology of mystical experience. By following to Father Boris Bogniskos and Father Dmitry Sanilai, he says that we need to restore a, a, a sense of the reciprocity in the relations between the Son and the Holy Spirit. Coding from Simeon, he says that the Son is then the icon of the Father and the Holy Spirit is uh, the icon of the Son. The Son is one with the Father and Spirit and His glory is the shared and blessed light of the consumption consubstantial uh, trinity. Father Golitsyn, following Dionysius, identifies the light which comes to us from the Father of the lights with the second person of the trinity, <coughs> the radiance of the Father, who provides us with the access Korosagoge, to the Father. Uh, to Father Alexander, Eastern Christian soteriology of deification draws ultimately on, the, on this tradition of the tabernacle and temple, but also he saw the spiritual fatherhood as illustration of the Trinity. So the edification, theosis, is realized in the intimate relationship between, uh, obtained between a spiritual father and his son. Fatherhood and sonship are brought to perfection by the work of the Divine Spirit, an image of the Trinity itself. But the father and son supremely transcend all divine fatherhood and sonship. Father Alexander is aware of uh, Messalian claims to the physical side of the Trinity. And he points out that, the God, that God only can be known in the experience of His presence in His life. The main research lines of this study, uh, of this study are consubstantial trinity, formless light of the Godhead, gl uh, glory Christology, and possibility of knowing God directly, even in their present life. By being filled with the indwelling love of the Father and the Son, a divine gift of light, photodosia. In his study, the, the place of the presence of God, apparatus of Pers Persia's portrait of the Christian holy man, 
Father Alexander Boritsyn says that theosis, as, as it appears in Abrahat, and as embodied in Gerontes, like Father Emilianos, is manifestly not an invention derived from Greek philosophy, but the fruit of the revelation of, uh, to Israel fulfilled in Christ Jesus, and likewise the Christology of the Ecumenical Councils. Afrat Sage, Sage, and the Holy Old Man, Gerontes, of the early monastic Egypt are all mediators of the Divine Presence, instances of the recovery of the Adamic image. Thus, for example, Saint Antony, they have become Christ in Christ, the place of His Presence. Transform as the very result of visionary experience is a basis to serve as a demonstration, demonstration for the soteriology of the education, as the shared and blessed light of the consubstantial unity. I am convinced that this is exactly what is going on in the life of Afu, Apa Afu. The living flesh of the emperor is the uh, is to the wood, wood of the icon of the statue. As the living and incomprehensible light of God's glory, Christ is to our flesh. He appears in a light which is personal and substantial. It is in a shape without shape and a form without form. Morphe amorphotos. The holy man, uh, as theophanic, means becoming present to the Trinity. The edification theosis is realized in the intimate relationship obtained between the spiritual father and his son. I really, uh, Jacob, named uh, Peniel, that is the face of God, the place of which he says, I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Genesis uh, 32, 13. Christ is called the angel of, the, of God, who takes, who, who talk, talk, talk to Moses in the burning bush, uh, stating, I am that I am. The 14th century in his <coughs> just doctrine was based on the ordinance that man is called to engage in direct, direct, unmediated communion with God even in this earthly life. True knowledge of God is granted to those who uh, proved worthy of contemplating Christ in his glory, seeing God face to face and partaking of his life. The light falls or the illumination, elamsis, can be described as the visible manifestation of divinity, God's energy or, or, or His grace beyond human comprehension or physical <coughs> perception. The visible theophany, <coughs> however, requires spiritual, spiritual, spiritualized senses, a doctrine that was unknown to the Antiochian. As this is, is the empirical knowledge of God's indwelling. This term also describes a subtle and dynamic experience of communion in grace, which responds to an ontological necessity of the soul. Empirical theology is uh, to a mystical realist transcending the barrier of concepts. The mind is filled empirically with apophatic dimension and receives the one without form. <coughs> the light of glory shines from the inside to outside as the radiation, irradiation of the presence of the divine light in which the body shares too. This inward, outward dynamics of the contemplation of uncreated light, which Alexander Golitsyn reduced to a uh, Nisean band on representing the exterior visionary experience, is also grasped by the Palami theology. St. Gregory Palama says that during the Lord's Transfiguration on Mount Tabor, the Apostles saw the very grace of the Spirit which later dwelt within them. For one is the grace of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which was contemplated even with the bodily eyes, which were opened in order to turn those who used to, to be blind into seers and contemplators of the uncreated light. Thus, the light of grace in the past, illumined from the outside, exoten, the worldly ones, and to their physical eyes, con conveyed this light to the soul within the body, while now, as the grace dwells inside us, this naturally illumines, illumines 
the soul from within, end of them. I suppose this is a distinction between the Theophany in, in the Old Testament and the Theophany in the New Testament. Ex of them, end of them. The logic of these studies is uh, as follows. Christ is the face of God. Because he is the iconic revelation of God. Christ reveals God's face. Thus there is a coincidence of the images of the light and the face. It is Christ whose indwelling presence radiates the light that illumines the temple, the temple of the mind and he mediates between the Trinity and the creatures. The light that illumines the temple of the body of the saints is nothing other than the splendor of the Lord's face. This kindled light of the grace is the light that God uh, shares with the created man. When Christ abides in the Christian mind and body, the face of the Christian em emulates the Lord's face in the same way that Christian mind reflects the divine light. It is important here to observe the bodily or sensory component of the statement, the face of the Christian. Holy Fathers understand Christ to be the face of, the, of God and of man. Notably, in two Enoch, from which we learn that the Lord created Adam, Adam from his face. The, only, the whole man fully participates in the uncreated light, a, a dimension of lived apophatesis which Father Stanley names as the second degree apophatesis. Also, I would be grateful to Father Alexander if he have time to, to study the triadology of the Cappadocian Fathers. To uh, relate his, uh, his study about, about the um, uh, Semitic <coughs> mysticism to this triadology of Cappadocian Fathers to better understand the relation between um, transcendent trinity and the experience the, of the trinitarian event during the transfiguration in Visio Dei. Because I, I suppose th this, is, was, this was a, an experience of uh, Iman and Trinity. That's my homework. <laughs> 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 Thank you.